So we are gathered here today to make something amazing. Um, this has been, uh, the, the 1204 was a phenomenal release, um, and we can bank that, right? Uh, 1210 was the beginning of this extraordinary push that we're making um, to create an open platform, a free platform, uh, that spans everything from the phone to the cloud and supercomputers. Uh, by 1404, we'll be in a position um, to ask Jamie Strandberger and his extraordinary team um, to deliver a security update, one security update, to phones, laptops, tablets, TVs, PCs, servers, cloud servers, and supercomputers. Nobody has ever achieved anything like that in the history of computing. So I just want you guys to have a sense that we're here to try and make history. We're here to essentially open up computing, uh, converge computing in a way that nobody has ever done before. So it's a really powerful mission. And, uh, and I appreciate that you're all here to, 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 to tackle the various aspects of that goal. So 1210 was quite an intense release. Um, we had uh, we had a large amount of change that we had to, to bring in. We had to, to um, break some of the past to make room for the future. Um, and I appreciate that we all pulled together um, to make some of that happen. Um, I thought it was an extraordinary release. It, it, there were tough changes that we had to make. There were tough shifts that we had to make. Um, but I've seen a lot of positive coverage, both in terms of the experience, the performance, um, some of the, the, the new elements of polish that came in, some of the work that happened in the cloud. So I want to thank um, everybody who, uh, who put their heart and soul into 1210. I think it was a great release. Thank you very much. And the world is noticing. So I was really delighted to hear news that Valve was bringing Steam to Linux and specifically to Ubuntu. Uh, the Valve folks will be here, they will be talking, they have a plenary session, I believe, um, later in the week. Um, so if they're here in the room, are you guys here? No. Not, but when they're here, I, I think it'd be really interesting to hear what they have to say. Um, this was the number one requested item for like the last eight years, right? <laughs> and we shouldn't, we shouldn't um, downplay um, what a milestone it is that the, the broader consumer-oriented software industry is coming here to find out what's possible, right? It's a testament to what you have all achieved, what you have all done over that long period. Um, and it's, no, it's, it's, it's a testament to you guys that they're coming here first, right? Because we represent, I think, the true aspirations of what it means to bring free software, bring Linux, bring open source, whatever language you prefer, to a much wider audience. It's an extraordinarily difficult challenge. The, the, the benchmark for consumer-grade software is, in many cases, higher than the benchmark for enterprise software. Many people don't appreciate that. It's harder to do it for the whole world. It's harder to do it for people who are far from professional support than it is to do it for the data center. So not only am I delighted that, that these guys are showing up um, and that they are but the tip of the iceberg, um, but it gives me great confidence for the broader mission that we've set ourselves. So have a listen to what they have to say. There are other companies in the gaming industry who will be here um, in Copenhagen as well. Um, so this is, this is uh, not an isolated move. We saw last, um, uh, in the last cycle, we saw Electronic Arts starting to publish games for Ubuntu. Um, they have said to us that, that they're delighted with the results and will be expanding both the range and the depth and the ambition of that program. And of course, as we hit the, the mobile world, gaming is um, an important, an important um, part of the experience um, that we want to target there as well. So those of you who are passionate about graphics, get involved. Those of you who are passionate about games, get involved. Um, on the more commercial front, um, we have for a long time been shipping PCs pre-installed with Dell, with Lenovo. Um, those of you who've been paying close attention to retail stores in China will know that uh, this week um, HP Pavilion started showing up with Ubuntu pre-installed 
in China. So I want to thank and congratulate the various teams who work to make that possible. Uh, they're in the room, so give them a round of applause because this is... <laughs> the top four PC manufacturers in the world now ship Ubuntu as their alternative operating system to Windows. So that's an extraordinary achievement, and it has come after an enormous amount of work. It's easy to, it's easy to um, um, take it for granted. I don't take it for granted, because I know that every single PC that comes through that factory process, every single PC requires significant intellectual um, work. And I know how that work flows into Ubuntu, and then by extension into the broader um, uh, open source community from Linux up through the rest of the stack. Um, so that team, congratulations, well done. This is a milestone. We look forward to seeing um, that, uh, that footprint expand in terms of the number and range of, uh, of devices. Those of you who live here in Europe will know that it's now possible to buy quite a few different fairly high-end PCs. Um, uh, uh, you, may have, you may have followed the coverage of the Dell Sputnik work um, that continues, although it's up to, you know, it'll, it's, it's Dell, Dell's privilege to take the wraps off that when they're ready. Um, but I have a sense that times are changing and that if we deliver great quality work, um, industry will pick it up um, and, uh, and, and, and the broader ecosystem will start to pick it up. This cycle, we want to do something a little bit different. This cycle, we want to make our first real push into the mobile world. So who has the Nexus 7 device here? Good bunch of you. Um, so we've picked the Nexus 7 um, as, a, as a sample mobile device. And what we're going to do this cycle is bring up the Ubuntu desktop on the Nexus 7. So we're not making a tablet edition of Ubuntu. Um, but if you think of what a tablet edition of, of Ubuntu would look like, the vast majority of it would have everything in common with the desktop edition of Ubuntu. So by choosing a device, um, we make it a lot easier for ourselves um, both inside Canonical and in the community and in the broader Linux community to compare notes, to compare benchmarks, to, um, to, 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 to know that we're talking about the same bugs. Um, this is a device that happens to be very widely available at a very reasonable price. Um, the, the Android load on that and, and the Google experience is not bad. Um, uh, we, we think it could be enhanced with a little Ubuntu. Um, and so that's why we've, we've invited everybody to, to participate in this program. It's about squeezing down battery life. Uh, well, no. no. <laughs> it's about <laughs> squeezing down the draw on the battery. It's about um, understanding the, the pressure on memory when that happens and how we react to it. Um, it's about looking at networking in a highly mobile context and seeing what we want to do um, from, a, from a networking point of view, how we want to reshape the stack so that um, people who are using Ubuntu in a mobile context know that they're connected, feel that they have control over how they're connected, and that we've explored and, 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 and either handled or planned to handle all of the different network-specific use, specific use cases. So, you know, when we started this process of saying we wanted to design a family of experiences that would span from the phone through the PC and the TV out, out to, uh, to um, um, every kind of intelligence screen that you'll be, you'll be using, um, people said we were crazy. Designers said we were crazy. Uh, can't be done. Um, engineers said we were crazy. Can't be done. In fact, I think now, the trend is clear. Microsoft has come out with a converged tablet desktop experience. Um, the changes that we made to our desktop were specifically designed to accommodate the full range of devices. And that gives us a unique, once in a lifetime, uh, po positional advantage to essentially deliver this before the commercial ecosystems do that. Um, so it's really important, I think, for the success of free software in the future, for bringing free software to this much broader um, ecosystems, this much broader audience, that we get this right. And that's why we need all the help that we can get. We need all of you to, to get engaged. There isn't one specific problem. This isn't just an apps problem. This isn't just a shell problem. This isn't just a, an operating system problem or a kernel problem. It's a problem that affects um, every aspect of the system. So all of you can play a role in finding these rough edges and, uh, and polishing them off. Now, to give you some hope that, in fact, Ubuntu really can run 
quite well um, on, uh, on mobile form factors from an engineering point of view, from a performance point of view. I'd like to show you the latest version of this, which is Ubuntu for Android. This is the full Ubuntu desktop running on um, a current generation phone. Um, this is work that we have done um, together with very other, various other players in the ecosystem. Um, if you were to use this phone, you would see it's just a standard Android phone. Um, it has this um, additional app, which I'm going to launch, um, which in a little while will give me a full Ubuntu desktop. So there's no smoke and mirrors. This is the Ubuntu desktop running on this phone. Uh, there's enough horsepower in the CPU. There's enough horsepower in the GPU. There's enough... Um, uh, we go. Um, we, yeah. And uh, I could show you, you know, essentially every des every desktop application, Open Office, mm -hmm. uh, the web browser. Um, so here we've got Shotwell, for example. Um, which comes up. Now, this is essentially a cold boot scenario, right? So we brought this up completely from scratch. Um, we have the, all of the indicators running. And the really interesting part of the problem um, has not been so much getting the operating system running on the device. It's been building the bridge to Android. So that what I have, um, when I look at this network stack, for example, up here, what I have is a, an indicator representation of the Android network stack. So if I go and... <laughs> yes. <laughs> My glamorous but still anonymous assistant <laughs> in the audience. Um, so for example, um, messages come straight in. We have the usual in, uh, a messaging experience. Here are SMSs. And uh, if I wanted to, I could go and reply to this SMS from the desktop. So there's a telephony application that essentially exposes um, aspects of the telephony stack. So in here, right, and I think I can reply. <laughs> Something tells me that's, uh, that's going to be the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we have the full Ubuntu desktop running on a current generation um, uh, phone. Um, <laughs> smart ass. <laughs> All right, so the client story is glorious. There's a lot of work to be done. Have a blast, climb in, have fun. Uh, so let's talk about the cloud. We have something extraordinary in Juju. Right? I've watched how people all over the world on different clouds and different environments have started figuring out how this is something new, something that hasn't existed before. Um, um, I stopped getting the question, you know, will this conflict with Puppet or Chef when people see how they can embed Puppet or Chef inside their Juju charms and essentially get Puppet and Chef to talk to each other in, for the first time ever, a really clean, sane way. Uh, how many of you guys have actually used Juju to bring something up in the cloud or on, on, on Metal? Cool. Um, how many of you guys have done that on ARM servers? Uh, even cooler. <laughs> so so we, we're, what we're doing is we're condensing um, the expertise that it takes to run services, to scale them out, to scale them back, to connect them up. We're condensing that down to a set of Juju charms. Um, in this cycle, we have a particular interest in these charms, charms that developers use every day to spin up um, services of all sorts. So um, the sorts of services that are, are interesting are web frameworks, the data stores that are typically used with those web frameworks, front-end load balancing proxies. Um, these are the things that many of you who are web developers are using every day. And so what we want to do is give you the ability to spin up topologies of those services on your laptop in memory or on any cloud um, or on the metal, um, on any kind of metal, um, really easily, really efficiently. 
Um, the Juju guys are, 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 are taking fantastic uh, steps forward. Um, the quality and scalability of Juju is improving dramatically. Um, the uh, number of different clouds that we target is, um, is expanding. Um, and we're figuring out how to make this consistent ecosystem grow in all the different places where people want to take it. So if you're a web developer, um, these are the charms to focus on. Uh, uh, there's been some fantastic, uh, fantastic work recently on the ch Tomcat charms, for example. Where's Mr. Ayers? Up over here. Well done. So Tomcat is now charmed in a really sophisticated way. You can deploy it. You can add your app to it. You can connect it up to all kinds of different d data sources. And it really expresses um, what's great about Tomcat. The important thing here is not that we have one way to, to, to do um, everything. What's important is that what we express inside the node charms is what's great about node. And what we express inside the Rails charms is what's great about Rails. So um, we want to really work with people who um, come from those communities and know how those communities think and how they want it to be. Um, I'll, I'll never forget seeing the, the web page from the Ruby on Rails community, which said, you know, don't use Ubuntu packages um, for Rails. And that really made me think. Um, and it came to the conclusion that there was this tremendous tension, essentially, between frameworks um, and packages. And so I think it's important that we have packages. I think it's useful that we have packages. But it was a real wake-up call that, in fact, we could go much further. And I think G Juju is that place. Juju is where we bring together what the frameworks people want, and what the security people want, what the cloud people want, um, and bring them all together in something that's really consumable. So I think this is an important mission um, as we look towards um, supercomputers and, of course, clouds, um, large-scale computing um, in all shapes and forms. And some of those shapes and forms may be a little surprising. So we took the step in this last cycle of bringing Ubuntu up on the Azure cloud. And this was, this was a really interesting experience. Um, it, it involves us working closely with Microsoft. It involves us fixing bugs in Linux. It involves us expanding the way Juju works so that we can work with clouds that are architected in very, very different ways. Um, it involves us working with ISVs who have customers every day who are bridging these two worlds. So I think this has been a really interesting exercise. Um, and I called this cloud out purely because it is so far away from where our comfort zone classically would be, right? Um, it's fantastic that we're also um, right at the center of the HP cloud, which is built on Ubuntu using OpenStack. That's a cloud that's easy for us to understand. But I think this world of horizontally scaled computing is going to take um, any number of different shapes. And we need to be willing to figure out what it will take to get um, Ubuntu into all of those different places. Um, one of the key steps we took in the last cycle was this. We expanded MAS to cover multiple clusters. Um, and so what we have now is a, is a really efficient way to d deliver Ubuntu um, to scale out hardware in lots of different configurations in lots of different places. Um, so uh, it, with MAS 1.0 in 1204, we essentially said, OK, let's take a cluster and make it really easy to deploy services to that cluster. And with 2.0, we said, OK, let's take multiple clusters and let them get glued together so that you can um, essentially have no realistic limit within the scope of what people are doing today um, on, on the size of the cluster that you can address um, with a single MAS. So to the MAS team, wherever you are, where are you? Yep. All right. Not clustered. Um, thank you and well done. Um, one of the reasons we want to do that is because the server world is changing. And I don't have a crystal ball that's any less cracked or cloudy than all of yours. Um, I know that, uh, that the future is unclear, but I think it's really interesting that the, that the assumptions that people have held about what a server looked like are changing just as fast as the assumptions that people have held about what a PC looks like. Um, and so we've, we've been on this um, a journey with ARM over the last couple of years. Um, essentially looking at Ubuntu in an ARM context and making sure that it's there for people who want to um, explore what's possible 
with uh, a Linux stack, an open Linux stack um, in ARM. And increasingly, what's interesting to people is devices that um, uh, look like a server, talk like a server, um, act like a server, so we may as well go ahead and call them servers. Uh, the Lenaro folks are here again, um, just, down the, just down the corridor, um, and uh, they have built a, a server-oriented working group, which we're very delighted to be participating in. Um, Lenaro has done an enormous amount of work with Ubuntu, so we can confidently say that Ubuntu is the cleanest, easiest, best platform for people who are building out devices um, uh, on Linux on ARM. Um, and I think this will be a continuation. This cycle will see a continuation of that effort. Um, but it's not, by all means, um, you know, a, a straightforward proposition to say that ARM will dominate the low-power low server world. Uh, we've seen really interesting um, entrants from, from Intel. The first moonshot servers from HP will be based around Atom. Um, AMD is really shaking things up. I don't know if you saw that AMD announced that it will be an ARM licensee and will move um, smartly into the ARM server space. But of course, it also has an x86 portfolio. So expect radical change. Expect the unexpected. Um, climb in and, uh, and see what's possible. Um, the world goes through phase changes. You know, change happens in a, in a very linear, constant way. Um, one thing leads to another. Processes get um, a little faster. Um, uh, silicon features get a little smaller. Power draw, you know, drops incrementally every month, essentially. Um, and despite those smooth, continuous changes, the macro world goes through these sudden phase changes. Um, and I think we're about to have one of those phase changes in the server world. And I think Ubuntu is the right platform, in part because of um, what we've done in the past, in part because of what we'll do in the future, and in part just because of the way we've pitched it, the way, we've, the way we shape it, the way we make it available um, for this um, very scaled out, hyperscale, hyperdense future. This is not a skunk. It's not even a Rick rolling release animal. <laughs> it's the rearing ringtail. Um, so let's make it a great release. Those of you who want to work on some of the things, you know, we have our personal projects too. And those of you who want to work on some of the things that are personal projects for me, personal projects for other people, um, and you want to be part of teams that are going to do some really interesting stuff that will be unveiled this cycle, that will all be open source, um, please um, come and see this guy over here, Michael Hall. Um, there are already a number of folks um, who've expressed interest in this. Um, I, I, I wanted to make it very, very clear that the reason we, we polish some things is not because we don't trust our community or not because we think our community isn't um, capable of, of bringing a lot of vibrancy, but because there is great value in getting things to the point where other people will immediately see the benefits to themselves, um, where we've thought through how pieces fit together. Um, open source conversations um, are wonderful in their diversity, and I think this is an important part of that diversity, to be able to bring something forward that isn't done yet, but at least has the kernel of its, of its, of its vision clearly expressed. And so that's what, uh, that's what I um, was driving at when I invited people to participate in some of that development with us, just as you might um, want to clue us in into some of the things that you might be interested in, but not yet ready to talk more broadly about. So thank you all for coming um, from all of your respective continents and subcontinents. And uh, I hope you have an extraordinary week. Uh, I hope it's an absolute blast. I hope that uh, Ubuntu flies on the Nexus 7 for you. Um, and that you get a shell account on a supercomputer somewhere with uh, a, a low power processor. Because all of those things are little um, teaser trailers on the future, which is what we are all set to build. So thank you for coming and have a great week.